How's it going guys? I'm Josh and today we're going to do an intro to skateboarding photography. Now the reason I want to call this an intro is because skate photography is a really broad topic and there's so much stuff to go over. People use flashes, they use strobes, lots of crazy technical equipment and when you look in magazines like Thrasher you see these insane photos and you're like how do you even get to this point of photographic skill? So today I'm going to walk you through 10 simple steps to getting started in skate photography and once this video is over you should be ready to get out there and take some cool skate photos. That being said, let's get into it. Step one, have a friend that skates and make him pick a trick that's super easy for him, something he can land consistently and wouldn't mind doing a hundred times as you experiment to get the perfect skate photo. And if you don't have a friend that skates, you can always go to the skate park and try and meet people because most kids are down to have a cool skate photo taken of them. Be aware that there's no shame in making your friends do a trick a bunch of times. I still do this when I'm figuring out new techniques. For example, this photo I shot of my friend Adam, I made him do front shoves for at least an hour and a half until I got this photo. Once you figure out these techniques, you can shoot them on tricks that your friends won't be willing to do a bunch of times. For example, a handrail trick. Step two, know the ethics. Say you're shooting a photo of your friend and it's turning out great and then the one time they land it, you mess up the photo. Can you use an attempt that he didn't land? Originally, I thought you couldn't, but then I learned that in Thrasher and all the professional skate magazines, they run no land tricks all the time. There are just two requirements for doing this. Requirement A, the photo has to at least look like they landed it. So this works best on attempts where maybe they stuck it or got super close, but they didn't quite right away. Dude, we can see this one, right? You can tell it didn't land it. B, and this is most important, they have to have landed the trick at some point. If your friend never lands the trick, the photo should not see the light of day unless it's a cool slam photo. Step three, pick your lens. Now one of the most popular lenses in skateboarding is the fisheye, and I use the Optica 6.5 millimeter fisheye. Links down below to all my equipment. Now the reason why people like fisheyes is because it makes the gap look bigger, the rail look longer, and the skater look higher in the air. But really, you can take a skate photo with any lens you want. So just get creative and use what you have available. Step four, set your shutter speed. Now as we've talked about before, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO all counterbalance each other, so you have to choose which is most important to you and set that first. For action shots like skateboarding, shutter speed is most important because it changes how the action is going to look. For daytime skate photos, I found that 1 640th of a second or 1 800th are the perfect shutter speeds for freezing the action. If you shoot too slow, then the skateboarder is going to be blurred, but if you shoot too fast, you're not letting in enough light and the photo is going to be too dark. Now as the day goes on and it gets a little bit darker outside, you can get away with slower shutter speeds because you're not battling with the sun as much. Step five, set your aperture. And this is a cool place for you to get creative in the skate photo. If you have a small aperture number like F4, you're gonna have a larger aperture which lets in more light and gives you a shallower depth of field, which means the skater is gonna be in focus and everything in the background is gonna be a little bit more milky. If you go with a larger aperture number like F16, more stuff in the photo is gonna be in focus and you're gonna be letting in less light because your aperture is actually smaller. More often than not, you're gonna have to use lower aperture numbers and the reason why is because skate photography is often such a battle to let in enough light into the camera and it all comes back to the fast shutter speeds. With a fast shutter speed, you're not letting in as much light into the camera through the shutter, so you have to compensate with either a low aperture number, a high ISO, both, or what a lot of people use are flashes or strobe lights. And strobes are great, but they're very expensive, a little bit complex, and that's a later skate photo tutorial, so for now, you're gonna have to use lower aperture numbers, just be aware of that. Step six, set your ISO, and since this comes after aperture and shutter speed, you just wanna use this step to make sure the photo is properly lit. Now, as you get a higher ISO, the photo becomes more and more grainy. So some cameras might let you go as high as 12,800, maybe even higher, but it won't necessarily look good. This comes down to personal preference and what camera you're using. With my Canon 70D, I can go up to 6400, I believe, but I personally won't shoot past 3200 because it gets a little bit too grainy for my taste. If you get to this step and your ISO is just way too high for your taste, what you need to do is either make your shutter speed slower or make your aperture number smaller because that'll let in more light and let you have a lower ISO number. Step seven, frame the photo. Framing is just when you decide what's gonna be in the photo and where, and a big part of that is choosing whether to shoot portrait when the camera is sideways, or landscape when the camera is normal orientation. And a big part of deciding that is just what's going on in the background. So if there's a really cool sunset or a tall building you wanna capture and nothing going on in the sides, you're probably gonna to wanna to shoot portrait. Now, if the sky is boring, gross, and gray, but there's a really cool 
mural on the left of the skater, then you're probably gonna wanna shoot landscape to show that off. Another huge part of framing is deciding where to place the skater within the photo. And the main goal with this is to make sure the skater pops out, make sure he's the star of the show. So a good way to do this is to work within what you have. So if you have two buildings, place them between those two buildings, place them against a clean wall, or another great thing to do if everything around you is super busy is use a fisheye, get super low, maybe even line your stomach and point straight up and have him framed up within the sky because that's always a nice clean color that he'll stand out against. Also, know the stance of the skater so you can avoid shooting butt shot, which is exactly what it sounds like. Either show their face or their sides, just not their butt, no one wants to see that. One way to make this easier is have the skater stand where he's gonna be in the middle of the trick so you can move around and know exactly how the photo's gonna look. This also helps for step eight, which is focusing the camera. Once you have everything lined up, the skater's set, you're set, focus the camera on the skater, pretty easy step. Say you're shooting a handrail or a gap or something where the skater can't stand, where he's gonna be in the middle of the trick, what you can do is focus on something that's close by like a handrail or a plant, whatever works. Step nine, you're ready to go, start shooting. Now, if the shot ends up not looking that great, don't be afraid to try switching lenses, experimenting with different angles, just get crazy until you find something that works really nicely. Another tip, if you're using a fisheye, you end up getting pretty close to the action and to avoid both your camera and you getting hit, what you're gonna wanna do is line up the shot and instead of being super close into it, actually back away with your body so your hands are fully extended. So as soon as the skater is at the peak point, you snap the photo and then you immediately jerk the camera away so no one gets hit even if he flings out his board. A big part of the perfect skate photo is knowing when to actually hit the shutter button and snap that beautiful shot. So part of this is just thinking about when the skater looks best in the air. So if they're jumping over something, you wanna get them when they're at their peak height, their highest in the air. If they're doing a flip trick, you wanna get it right when they catch the board in the air. If they're doing a handrail or a ledge trick, right when they lock in will usually look best. But there is an exception to every rule, so you wanna think about it yourself, maybe even talk to the skater about it, because they might know something you don't know, and strategize. Now, as far as actually timing it right, this comes with practice. All in all, you will figure it out over time. It helps to look in skate magazines and see how the professionals are doing it as a source of inspiration. One last tip, as you get more comfortable with the process, you can start trying to control more elements. Now, a big thing of this is actually choosing what the skater wears. So when you know what trick is gonna be done at what place, tell the skater what to wear. If it's gonna be against a big black wall, don't have the skater wear black. Have him wear white or red, something's gonna pop. Don't be afraid to tell your skater what to wear. I do it all the time, I promise. Last thing, step number 10, post your favorite skate photos that you take on Instagram using the hashtag JoshCatsPhotos and tagging me at JoshCats so I can see all of your awesome work. It's really incredible to see all you guys progressing in photography and I love looking through all these shots. And I'll also be featuring my favorite photo in my next photo tutorial and reposting it on Instagram. So my favorite one from last photo tutorial, I asked you guys just to do whatever you're feeling, random challenge. Someone by the name of Allergy Suck posted this super cool long exposure of a waterfall. I believe they used the neutral density filter, which is a filter I'll be going over in a future photography tutorial. Anyway guys, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any suggestions on what I should teach next, on what I should do differently, or if I should talk faster, talk slower, talk in a British accent, please let me know in the comments down below. Your advice is always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you eventually.